And we'll ask some more basketball with our buddy Tom Murphy coming up. But, Tom, I do want to start with the football scoop report. Uh, Joe Coffin, I hope I'm saying his name right. He was a defensive coordinator at Houston. Apparently he's been hired as a new defensive analyst for Sam Pittman. Uh, just kind of what – I know it's been quick 24 hours. What, what have you gathered from – Sam Pittman's most recent reported hire. Yeah, I looked into um, his background, and his Arkansas State teams were very, very aggressive. A lot of sacks, a lot of tackles for losses, um, and they led the um, FBS in interceptions one year, and I, I don't remember the number. I wrote it today, 23 or something like that in 2015, just an astounding number of interceptions. So just another another brain in the room, you know, to help come up with ways uh, it's just you come up with a way in a game to frustrate the other team for three four five series like they did Ole Miss and that's how you win a game and same with the Mississippi State game you you just come up with a way throw them off their game and if you can steal a few possessions out of it you can get yourself a win so um looks like a good hire to me and um I don't know how many analysts targets I had I want to say Alabama. I looked it up one time last year. Had about 12 analysts. So a lot of dudes in the room. Tom, spring practice starts March the 9th. That would be next Tuesday. I know you're excited for that. I know Clay Henry's excited for that. Um, There's a lot of people excited for just the upcoming spring practice, and deservedly so. When In the spring game, I think it's April 5th? 17th. 17th, okay. Well, what do you most looking forward to learning and trying to pick up on this team when spring ball starts next week? Well, there's a couple of things. And obviously the marquee deal is at quarterback. Mm-hmm. It, KJ Jefferson, Malik Hornsby look like they're one and two. Um, and you're, you're pleased with what you saw out of Jefferson in the Missouri game. Could have, would have, should have been uh, a win engineered by the freshman quarterback the red shirt freshman quarterback. So um, trying to find packages for those two guys and and how you deploy them big time. And then obviously trying to find a pass rush because if, if Arkansas had been able to affect the passer in some of their games, and there was a couple, three games like A&M and Florida, a couple of others where they just did not make Kellen Mond uh, or Kyle Trask uncomfortable. So they got to come up with ways and that's, that's where it got uh, a guy like Coffin can help you. Just come up with ways to exploit some tackle or, or beat a guard and, and get in there and get get the quarterbacks moving around and take them off their rhythm. Let me use so the, those are the two biggest things. Obviously, there's a lot of other yeah. stuff that we'll be looking for, but uh, those are those are my kind of headliner thoughts. Let me use baseball as an example and ask you how it's going to affect football. We've we've seen a lot of players in baseball. And I know the rules are a little bit different, but. All these seniors that have come back, I know baseball shortened the draft to five rounds. That affected the rosters as well. But it's going to have a similar impact on SEC football where, as we've seen at Arkansas, where players have returned for another season that would not have been here otherwise. Uh, How is that going to affect Arkansas? Where's that position battle going to be sealed off that otherwise would have been an open uh, competition? And how do you think that's going to improve football not just in the SEC, but across the board. I think it's going to make the competition in this league and, and the level of play in this league uh, much higher, like 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 we're seeing it unfold in baseball already. Yeah, that's a great point. And I do think Arkansas is a team that benefited. What was it, nine guys that came mm-hmm. back? Something along those lines. And when you think of having another year out of Devion Warren, who was really coming into his own, uh, the Auburn game comes to mind. Just had a great game. Uh, Blake Kern, another year, and you've gotten more depth in your tight end room. Um, and so those those position battles will be uh, of note. And um, it, it, it affects several positions on the Arkansas team, offensive line. Think about that you've got Myron Cunningham mm-hmm. and you've got Ty Clary both back, guys who've played a whole lot of snaps for you. And the same thing did not – and Alabama did not get the same number of returners, but they're just plugging five stars and four right. stars in. So in LSU, kind of the same. And, you know, I, I thought Kellen Mond might come back for A&M. So they'll have a new quarterback, which, you know, gives you a little bit of hope that you can do something and break the break the skin in that series. But I think there's multiple position battle. And I do think that Arkansas will play a, a better brand of football based on having those veterans back. You know, 
it's fun watching Dave Van Horn's program, and you see the culture there. We see the culture and the buy-in that goes on with basketball. I, I just wonder if Sam has really gotten his program there with football yet because of the lack of spring and the lack of ability to have personal one-on-one team meetings. Uh, this spring, I think, is really important probably to to really drive home the nail on getting the culture truly built in this football program. Is, is, is that a good take from the outside looking in? Well, I think so. I mean, got, there's multiple other coaches in this league. You've had a lot more time to build up the coach-player relationships and all that kind of thing that Sam Pittman honestly didn't get. I mean, he got from December until March, mm-hmm. and how how much did you meet face-to-face with guys during that time? And there were some. So um, they did about as well as you could have expected uh, with last year with COVID, first-year staff. It, it was so – helpful that you had a veteran quarterback like Felipe Franks who could help the offense, just be a stabilizing force on that offense. Um, there's one game, though, the LSU game, where their COVID numbers caught up to them. They played it even though they had low numbers, and you, you kind of wish you could ha- have that one back and one more win. And if you throw the Auburn game in there, then you got a 5-5 five and five record. It didn't happen, so they got miles to go, but I do believe that the players believe in the coaching staff and the direction they're headed. Tom Murphy with us here on the Morning Rush. Todd, we got a text earlier from Dennis and Van Buren. Uh, I mentioned uh, the new defensive analyst hire. What about Butler Benton, who's going to be the new director of player personnel? What do you know about him? Yeah, not a whole lot. I mean, he was at Georgia Southern, and his background is he's been at Michigan State and um, a couple of other programs, or, or he, he was running back there. So, um, it's <laughs> Honestly, it's hard to get to know those guys. I mean, we have a recruiting guy, Richard Davenport, who does a great job. So for me, it's hard to really get to know those guys, particularly during COVID. But uh, I have no doubt that Sam Pittman went through his checklist and background and and believes in him. So uh, I, I suspect he'll do a good job for them. Tom, you're a Fayetteville resident. I don't know if you saw the report from Fayetteville Flyer yesterday that one of the pedal tavern companies uh, out of Nashville got their license for for Fayetteville. Do you know what a pedal tavern is? And if you do, are you dreading the day that you see those things near campus and when you're driving to games? (laughs) Ty, you've absolutely thrown me a curveball. Now, if you said something like there was axe throwing, which I know is up here that (laughs) Yeah. Trey Knox apparently is a big fan of. I could help you with axe throwing, but Pedal Tavern, I, I don't know. What, what is it? There, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll lay it down for you. So it's these things. It's the They have a little motorized It's like a engine. trolley. It's a trolley yeah. cart. That's they, a good way to put it. And, and you, you sit on it. They got bar stools around a trolley cart, and everybody sitting and enjoying their beverage has to – help keep the trolley pedal. moving along. You and got you, a pedal. They're yelling. It's just, Tom, I, I promise, like when you're driving to games and you see one of those, you're you're just going to shake your head in, dis- in disbelief and disappointment. Well, hang on now. Hang on. I've done one of those. Oh, I, wow. My okay. wife and I, and I do not remember the city, but we were on you one of those. You had a good time then. Maybe. <laughs> you did it right then, Tom. <laughs> I did not know that's what they were called. Or I might be dreaming it that we were in a city and saw one go by and went, hey, we got to do that. Yeah. But I don't remember if we did or not. But it looks, Ty, if drinking involved, I, I think you'd be an adherent to yeah. this. Drinking and exercise all at the same time, you know. Listen, it's the best it's of both. Yeah. It's the best of both worlds, I guess. So, <laughs> so I guess we'll have to wait and see. And, and so we were, talking, we were talking about this earlier. They hadn't got the entertainment district approved yet till, and they're coming back on that till September. Yeah, so you're going to see a bunch of yeah, because there's no drinking on Dixon now. So it's, it's never, it never <laughs> happened. Never <laughs> happened. So, all right. So since we've abandoned sports, it is National Snack Food Day. So if if we go to the cupboard, if we go to the pantry in the Tom Murphy house and and look inside, what what is the favorite snack food we're going to find in there? Yeah, nuts and fruits only. That's the only <laughs> thing I snack on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm a I am a absolute chip monster, and I know that it retains the, the salt in those retains it, and that's why I'm heavy around the midsection. And Richard Davenport was giving me a bunch of grief over that just today. Mm. How heavy I am about around your weight? Midsection. Oh, Richard. That's just mean. Mm. We're gonna, well, we're gonna have, hey, he'll be with us in about a half hour. Did so. you mention? Did you also mention the fattest city? You want to tell Tom the fattest cities? Two of them in the United. Uh, two States? of them, yeah. Two of them in the, in the in the country are right here in in our list: Little <laughs> well, Rock and Fayetteville. 
Yeah. I don't I, think a Fayetteville is a fat city, know. but, you know, whatever. I've, I've gotten better at eating fruits and nuts. Literally, I really honestly have. And um, Good for you. Uh, Cheez-Its are, are a particular favorite. Mm, and chips. Those are, so I eat everything. The, 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 uh, the hot and spicy Cheez-Its that have the uh, the little jalapeno kick. Those are, those are like crack cocaine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Eat a whole box of them. That's right. Yeah. Tom, we appreciate, you, we appreciate you diving in from anything to Arkansas yeah. football, basketball, and... Hey, A and M played last night. We yeah. may actually have a basketball game Saturday. How about that? They scored yeah. less than sixty for the seventh time in nine conference games. They scored less than sixty. They got beat by Mississippi State. So uh, the Bulldogs avenged the home loss to, to A and M. It's it's been a rough year for those guys. And Buzz Buzz Williams, I think, is one of the most intriguing dudes. When you hear him talk, he's talking on a different level, man. So uh, obviously, Arkansas should have them outmanned. Uh, Aaron Gordon, oh, did y'all see his line? 0 for 11, 0 for 5 from 3 last night, and did not, did not score. Jeez. Tough game. Yeah, tough game. Tom, appreciate it, buddy. We'll talk. Uh, we'll recap the A&M game. We'll get ready for spring football next Monday, okay? You, you betcha, man. We'll be a lot closer. Thanks. All right, thanks, Tom.